Hello everyone, this is Anton. Welcome to What The Math. And today we're talking about Titan, one of the moons of Saturn, where we know for a fact there is now methane seas or seas of methane. And we're going to be exploring it using this video that is absolutely in 360. So basically you can move around your camera as you fly through space with me. First, we're going to go to Saturn, fly around there, check out the rings, and then we're going to land on Titan and explore it as well. So welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. Now, what you may not know about Titan is that it actually has the highest current habitability rating uh, of any known world other than Earth. In other words, in terms of the most habitable planet, or uh, not planet, but a body where we can actually survive, it is actually Titan, not even Mars. Titan is actually more habitable than, Earth, than um, Mars. Uh, second, of course, after Earth. And all of this is thanks to the thick atmosphere that it has, where uh, the actual atmospheric pressure here is about 20% higher than it is on Earth, meaning that you can actually easily uh, stand on the surface without any kind of a suit, as long as you have oxygen supply and as long as you have uh, really warm clothing, because it's actually really, really cold here, specifically minus 180 degrees Celsius, and that's on a nice day. And all of this is actually co caused by a really interesting effect called anti-greenhouse effect. This is because of the hazy clouds that it has in the atmosphere. A lot of uh, these clouds that actually reflect sunlight, um, making it so that only a little bit of sunlight reaches the surface and warms it up. But basically this planet is, or not planet, this moon is a lot colder than it should be. Um, if it didn't have these uh, hazy clouds, it would actually be a lot warmer. But these clouds will eventually disappear and it's very likely that Titan will eventually warm up as well. And it will definitely warm up when our sun becomes a red giant because um, as the sun expands and becomes older, the Titan's atmosphere will change dramatically and possibly even become very similar to Earth atmosphere and Earth-like atmosphere, as long as Saturn is still in the same sort of position and as long as Titan is still orbiting around it. So something like five to six billion years in the future, it's possible that Titan might become Earth-like. But today what we know about Titan is that it actually has these really strange and usual oceans of ammonia and now we actually discovered oceans of methane as well. And what they are is essentially what they sound like. So basically there's ammonia and methane that is in liquid form and they create these large bodies of, I was about to say water, but it's not water, it's ammonia and methane. And they are essentially everywhere on the surface and we've detected them using a radar spectrometry. But of course, uh, it's a slightly different liquid, so it, it would behave slightly different as well. Specifically, it would not actually have an ice layer on top because um, very few liquids have solid form that is less dense than the liquid form. So uh, for water, ice always stays on top, but for other liquids, and here we're talking about ammonia and methane, uh, their ice form, their, their hard form would most likely sink to the bottom of that ocean. Now, we've actually studied this particular moon quite extensively and we know quite a lot about it and hopefully I'll try to mention the important facts in this video. And one of the uh, interesting things is that its um, atmospheric composition is quite uh, unusually similar to Earth, except for, of course that it lacks oxygen or it doesn't have as much oxygen, but it does have a very large amount of nitrogen, just like our, our atmosphere. There is some methane, quite a lot of methane in the atmosphere. And there's quite a lot of various um, complex hydrocarbons and a lot of various things like ethanes. There's even noble gases similar to the ones we can find on our planet. And essentially, it's a very complex atmosphere that is very, very interesting. And there's even uh, various circulations of gases in the atmosphere. And specifically here, we've discovered that for some reason, there's a lot of uh, downward motion of various hydrogen gases, and they kind of just disappear near the surface, which kind of made scientists speculate that it's possible that something on the surface is actually consuming hydrogen in the same way that oxygen is consumed on our planet or in the same way that some other um, materials might be consumed on our planet which possibly suggests that it, it's possible to have some sort of a methane slash ammonia based life here that is actually using these gases for its own chemical uh, reactions and because methane is a very simple hydrocarbon and it's actually the most common one of the most common elements in the universe because it basically has hydrogen and carbon in it 
if one day we can discover life on uh, Titan that is sort of methane based, this would suggest to us there is a lot of other planets and a lot of other sources of such life somewhere else in the universe because methane is so common that we can pretty much find it everywhere. And this possible evidence for life on Titan was actually identified back in 2010 by a person by the name of uh, Daryl Strobel from John Hop Hopkins University. And he essentially just said that this great ab abundance of molecular hydrogen in the upper atmosphere was somehow moving downwards all the time and kind of disappearing there and quite a lot of it disappeared so something must have been happening and it's either a chemical reaction we don't yet understand or something is literally using it for consumption and essentially for living. And all of this is actually consistent with another hypothesis that's kind of separate from this one um, in regards to various organisms, hypothetical organisms that can actually uh, reduce a compound called acetylene to methane. If you reduce acetylene to methane, there's actually some hydrogen involved in there. And so this actually creates another possible um, proof for some kind of a methane-based life on the surface. And this, of course, relates to the fact that if you have some sort of liquid, in this case liquid methane, um, maybe, just maybe, just similar to how liquid water creates life on our planet, liquid methane may create some kind of a methane life on Titan. And if this is actually what's happening on Titan, this also creates another really interesting fact uh, that we might have something called methane habitable zone in every single solar system where uh, if a planet is farther away from the star, uh, it might have quite a lot of methane on the surface that's liquid, which would of course create oceans of liquid methane where other types of life or other forms of life might actually be able to live quite comfortably in the same way that life on Earth lives with liquid water. And this really simple reaction is actually very similar to uh, the way that energy is produced on Earth using water. But basically here, if you combine hydrogen with acetylene and ethane, and the, all of these are present in, on, um, on Titan, you can produce methane, but you also produce energy. And so this is actually a reaction that would be hypothetically possible to sustain life. But if this is actually what's happening on Titan, if there's actually some sort of a life going on here, um, the way that uh, the metabolism would work for this type of life would actually be thousands of times slower than metabolism for any creature on Earth. In other words, uh, any kind of a methane-based life would be very, 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 very slow. It would be like basically watching things in slow motion. And to get a little bit more hypothetical and uh, give you a little bit more detail here, there's actually a really interesting theoretical membrane that has been produced in the lab. And this is very similar to the cell membrane that all of our cells use, but this membrane is called azot azotosome. Now, uh, azote is the French word for nitrogen and soma is the Greek word for body. So azotosome is essentially a body or a cell body made up of nitrogen. And this is a cell membrane that is basically um, made from methane, ethane-based uh, living cells, and is very similar to phospholipid bilayer inside our own cells. It functions in a very, very similar way. It does exactly the same thing. And what's really interesting is that in February of 2015, uh, researchers in Cornell universities were able to kind of recreate a model um, creating this theoretical membrane and how it would function in the, in the real life cell. And all of this was actually mentioned, or most of this was actually mentioned by Isaac Asimov, the famous science fiction writer. Back in 1962, he actually wrote an essay about it, how he talked about how it's possible that there might be life out there that uses something else, like nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, for example. So all of this is kind of theoretically possible. And to even add a little bit more to this mystery, um, azotosomes are made up of something called acrylonitriles. Now these actually can self-assemble into azotosomes without any help, they can just assemble into these um, cell-like structures. And it turns out there's a lot of acrylonitriles in, in, on Titan, in, in the Titan atmosphere, everywhere on the Titan surface, there's quite a lot of them, we've detected them, we know they are there. And so if these compounds are there, nothing is stopping them from assembling into these azotosomes and creating methane-based cells. Now to me, honestly, this is actually very, very exciting. First of all, it redefines what life means if we actually discover it on Titan. Second of all, um, if we actually do go to Titan um, again and we'll land people on Titan, we might be able to study this type of life and rediscover something else about ourselves because right now our life definition is kind of vague and also kind of simple. If we find life that is not oxygen and um, 
water based but we find life that is actually based on methanes or other molecules and we find a life that actually functions in a very different way and specifically based on these theories of um, both Isaac Asimov and of course scientists from uh, Cornell University and also the fact that we actually have uh, been able to create these azotosomes and we know that they can actually self-assemble and create a cell-like membrane all of this suggests to us, or to me at least, that um, life can be a lot more diverse than we can uh, than we think about it, and increases the chance for us to find this life in the universe dramatically. Because not only will we be able to find life um, on Earth-like planets, but it's possible that uh, life may exist out there on planets that are very different from Earth as well. Now, whether all of this is true, and or whether all of this is very hypothetical and just theoretical can only be found out if one day we'll land on Titan, on this beautiful, hazy planet uh, that orbits Saturn. And only when we land on it and we walk around and explore and discover various things, can we actually discover what life really is and what life actually means. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this little 360 exploration. And hopefully you will subscribe if you still haven't, like this video if you enjoyed watching it, and maybe even share it with your friends who might learn something from it. In one of the next videos, we'll talk more about Titan and about life in general, and we'll explore more of these planets in 360. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye.